OpenAI has revealed O1 Preview and O1 Mini. They both dropped on Thursday. We've had a couple of days now to play with it. Kevin, tell us what these are in like the ELI5 version. It's a large language model with chain of thought trained into it. The difference here is that O1 thinks about its request. Whatever prompt you give it, whatever question, what the task is, it takes a minute sometimes literally up to a minute to figure out what does the user actually want? What's the best way to solve that? And then it goes to actually execute the response. That's a marked difference from the way previous models have worked. And some are saying, Gavin, that this is the future of artificial intelligence. Yeah, and I think, you know, what there's been a lot of variety of different people that over the last couple of days have come out, use this, we've used this, and we're gonna talk a little bit about what we've done with it. But I think one of the questions people really have is like, does this work as promised? Because one of the things we've talked about with Strawberry on this channel forever is that we were thinking this is the next big model, and it is not a new model per se. It is a reasoning engine put onto this model of GPT-40 this reasoning engine will be part of OpenAI's releases going forward in some form, but the underlying model is still the same GPT-40 model that we were using before, correct? Yeah, and I know that that has some people crestfallen, but I, I, I don't want to speak for you. I think that has us super excited yeah. because the fact that, by the way, spoiler, it does seem to work incredibly well. And so the fact that we're able to extract even more juice from the same squeeze, if you will, that's really, really promising. So let's get down to it. As you mentioned, there's two models. There's a mini and there's a preview. The preview is not the full O1 model, but it's the best we have access to right now. And if you're doing anything where there is a clear, concrete answer, like let's talk math, science, and in some cases coding, this thing works. And some people have had a lot of success and other people have had mixed success. It hasn't eliminated all hallucinations, but it does seem like it's very good for specific science and logic-based use cases. There's a really funny video of an academic who used O1 to recreate the math that he did for his astrophysics PhD paper. There's no way. There's no way. Word line, are you in 208? <gasps> Oh my god, it ran! Oh my god, it ran! And it was able to get the information from his abstract on the PhD thesis, which is really remarkable. So yeah. that feels like we are entering into something where this is going to be more valuable. But Kevin, the funny thing for us, and I think probably for people who watch this video or that are more creatives or on that side, it might feel like it's not that big of a deal right now. For creative uses, you might actually see setbacks here. You might want to stick with a GPT-40 or another LLM because this thing was really fine-tuned, if you will, on science and math data sets because you could have code or clear answers to algebra that said, oh, whatever you did to reason your way to the answer, the answer was correct. So go with that. And that was the reinforced learning that went into training this thing over and over again. Writing a poem or coming up with a dank Guy Fieri haiku about <laughs> Flavortown, you and I might think that there's right answers to that, but it's a little more nebulous. So yes. science and math, yes, we're seeing massive improvements here, but how can you get the most out of it? First of all, have a task that this thing could excel at is one thing, but OpenAI themselves issued some guidance on how you should prompt this. Here's the tips that you should use when you're prompting O1 versus prompting 4.0 or any of these other uh, LLMs. Specifically, keep your prompt simple and direct. If you make them too complicated, it actually doesn't give you nearly as good a result. Don't use the chain of thought prompt. Don't assume that you have to tell it how to do the thing. It's going to do right. it on its own. So don't try to prompt it with that. Yeah. Don't be and like, then, oh, think critically on this one, bro. Like yes. actually knit a thinking cap and pull it snug all the way down to your foot. Like, it, no, this is what it does. You don't, you don't need to tell it that. Also, make sure you're using uh, specific delineators for clarity, meaning that you can use punctuation, triple quotes, or XML tags, if you know what those are, those things will allow you to get much, much more specific results. And then also, you don't have to dump a ton of information into it, only the specific stuff you want it to think yeah. about. So if you want it to crawl through a 40-page report, lop off the pages that don't matter. Don't make it go sifting through your noise to find its signal. But if you do that, you'll get much better results. You'll get faster results as well. And because they're limiting you to only a certain number of requests a week, depending upon the model you're using, 
every prompt is precious right now. Yes. So make sure you're using them to their fullest, which is something that you and I have not been doing. No, we well, that's joke the thing. Around I, wish, with these I wish I had a countdown so I knew like how much, how little I've got left. I did a couple <laughs> things with it myself. First and foremost, I wanted to try one thing, speaking of a creative side, because I, I was like, okay, I'm not going to have the math problem or the physics problem that's really going to test this thing. Lots of people out there are going to do that. What I wanted to do is I wanted to try to structure a novel, meaning that we've talked about this a lot. I don't think LLMs are going to get very good at writing books per se on their own for quite a while, but structures of books, specifically of novels or creative things, can often be can systematically figured out. So I asked it specifically, I said, okay, can you structure a novel for me that is a, a science fiction thriller it was kind of like in an Elmore Leonard style, not that it's Elmore Leonard, but it has that kind of vibe to it. And what it did really smartly for me is it went through and it thought, okay, who's a good character? And it actually returned a pretty good outline. And then I asked it one more follow-up because it was a little cliche in some of the characters and things like that. And I have to say, like I collected the whole thing and the character sheets that it gave me, which quite a bit of information, and it's not bad. Like it, it, I know they said specifically it's not good for creative use cases, but when your creative use case is a little bit formulaic in some way, it can really draw upon some interesting stuff. Shout out to Matthew Berman, who was the first person that I saw posting the how many words are in your response to this prompt, which this thing thought for 10 seconds. It said it was addressing the paradoxical query, figuring out the word count, counting words, clarifying the response. And it said, quote, Gavin, there are seven words in this sentence. You that are. checks out. That checks <laughs> out. I had to count it. I had. Yeah. To, I had. I have a. I have a small light up drone toy in my other hand, so I had to count with one hand because I'm. <laughs> Good a, job. I'm an adult. <laughs> Good job. But you made it work. I, hey, it worked. It passed it, and that was great. The thing that's slightly different to me about all this is. It's not like when ChatGPT hit and everybody was like, whoa, I can't believe you can do this. It's almost like you have to like kind of figure out the things that show it off right, right? That's the difference I feel like here. But again, we're, I feel like Tenacious D, this is just a tribute. This is just a preview. This yes. isn't the full-fledged thing. So let's talk about the future of AI and where this goes. I think there's two ways to look at this. First and foremost, the biggest news really to come out of this whole thing is the idea that inference can scale as well as training. And I think this is that's going to sound like to a lot of people in our audience, that may sound like gobbledygook, and, and I don't blame you. But the idea here basically is that you scale a new model every time. So when you scale a new model, you're putting in now really hundreds of billions of dollars into these new models to train them and they're going to get more and more expensive to train a new model. This is and it's on the way in that you're talking about. Yes, so this that's is right. and more it, data and going in and then more compute, more processing power to crunch said data to make the model. That's on the way in. That's right. And it's super expensive to make it. Now, inference means that the compute that is used within the model as you're running it and what they have found through this, by scaling inference, you can get better results, meaning that the more money and more time you spend on the model itself, you can actually get better results out of the model. Now, why, why does that make a difference, Kevin? I think it's a really important thing for people to know. If you can scale based on inference, that means essentially you could send away one of these AIs and say, Go think about how to cure cancer. And I'm not saying we're there now, right now. It's not a magic pill, but you could say right. that. And then a month later, that AI using all of this inference compute can come back and say, hey, I think I figured it out. And you're like, oh my God, you didn't shave or anything. And, you, and you've got this giant beard, Mr. AI, but you've come back with the answer to cancer. That's incredible. <laughs> and that is the reality that we might be living in now. Yeah, we're achieving significant gains with the models that we have today. So when we think about tomorrow's models that we know are on the way and supposed to be a massive improvement improvement on their own, when you start applying techniques like this to them, that is really, really exciting. Maybe scaling is all we need. And of course, Kevin, there is a model coming after this that is very clear to me, both from teases from Sam and other reasons. There is a new GPT model that will be coming. Sam did tease uh, another cryptic tease, which he loves to do about <laughs> the stars in the Midwest sky, which is a direct reference to Orion. So it is coming. There's going to be another thing on the way as well. Go poke and prod at it if you're a plus subscriber, just select it from the drop down, give it a whirl and let us know if you're having good results. Thank you.